Hello, everybody. I hope we've got over celebrating uh, NHS 75 now. We're a week uh, or more on, but it's definitely an opportunity, isn't it, to reflect on the future of the NHS, on how we build on everything that's brilliant about Ardash, but also how we tackle, honestly, some future challenges. And there's one or two uh, links and articles on the screen, the people who've been writing about that nationally that some of you uh, may find interesting to reflect upon, because we do need a a biggish national debate about how we develop health and care services in this country, how we achieve parity of esteem, uh, for example, how we challenge uh, the reality of an aging population and change some of our service models and how we uh, employ people in order to face uh, that future with a bit of confidence and a bit of hope. I've been really enjoying the process of going out and meeting people as part of the open staff meetings. It's remarkable the different things that are on people's minds and the things that people raise. If you're a member of our bank team uh, and you're listening to this in the next two weeks, you'll get a letter from me uh, with some of the issues that bank, dealing with some of the issues that bank staff raised with me fairly consistently in those meetings. But we had a real range really from the uh, facilities in Kimberworth through to uh, what it's like to work as a gardener uh, on, on some of our estate and, and cars that speed past you without due due consideration. One of the most striking contributions was from a member of our team uh, called Alice, who really challenged me on whether our environments and our approach were suitably uh, dementia-friendly, whether we were really given the priority that we should give uh, to memory services, to older people's services across the trust. And I think she was spot on. I've reflected on that. Obviously, I spent some time last week on the dementia bus, uh, outside Windermere, where John Bottomley and Rachel Deakin and I w had the opportunity to to simulate what it might be like to have uh, dementia, to reflect on what it might be like to look after someone with dementia, either at home or in the care environment, made a really big impression on me, that simulation exercise. And I know we're going to make it more widely available to people uh, across the organisation and to the trust board as we have a think about the future of dementia services, really important part of Ardash and really important, therefore, that we consistently get it right. So, Alice, if you're listening to this, I absolutely uh, uh, have not forgotten what you said to me and my colleagues, and we intend to work with you and others to take action. I've talked a bit already about celebrating the organisation. I do think that part of that is being honest about what doesn't work and could work better. Uh, I know for a lot of managers in the organisation, that's what you spend your time diligently uh, trying to help with and trying to fix. Risk registers, as I've said before, play a really important part in flagging those difficulties up and down the organisation. Sheila Lloyd is going to start chairing our new risk management committee uh, come October, and that's intended to give real oomph to our efforts to tackle risk and to reduce risk in the organisation. If you're listening to me thinking, don't really know what's on the risk register, how to contribute to it, if you get in touch with Jane Charlesworth in Phil Gowan's team, I know she'll help, but each of our care group teams are taking a look right now at their risk registers and making sure that they fully document some of the challenges that you face in the workplace, our patients face, in accessing and experiencing care. Risk registers are a really important part of how we work in the organisation. Now, right now, some of those same managers, having just come through with flying colours, the process of setting budgets for the year ahead, always a, a difficult and challenging time, are in the middle of an engagement process, a staff engagement process, about the future management structure of the trust. I want to pay tributes to those managers and leaders to their candour uh, and for the way in which they are working with those ideas and contributing to what's a genuine process of engagement. It doesn't affect the vast majority of people in our organisation directly, but if you do want to know more, there's just a couple of pages of frequently asked questions attached with this film. Hopefully, what you take from that is a commitment to the kind of openness and honesty uh, that is part of the value set of Ardash, always has been, always will be. We want to tell the story as we're going along, give people a chance to engage and contribute to how we lead this organisation, uh, what we're about and what the future holds. 
If you're about on Sunday, the chance to contribute to Disability Awareness Day, um, reflecting the very many people in our community, among our staff and volunteers, uh, with hidden or with visible disabilities, an opportunity to reflect on how we tackle ableism in the words that we use, in the environments we create, but, but also an opportunity to celebrate simply the diversity of uh, the communities in which we live. That celebration should be probably where I end this message for this week. I'll see you next week. Thanks for what you do.